Hello everyone, welcome to Ginger Gear. My name is Ginger Beard, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a jetpack in Click Team Fusion 2.5 using the platform movement object. But we won't be creating just any jetpack. This one's going to be kind of like the one in Cave Story. It's where you can boost left, right, up, and down. And the one I'm referring to is the Booster version 2.0. I found that one to be really cool because you can just control up, down, left, right, in the air, and just fly across. But the reason why I say kinda like, because there's gonna be a few differences, or, yeah, a few differences. One, uh, in the booster version 2.0, you can shoot straight up in Cave Story, and you can move left and right, um, slightly. And also, the gravity will be definitely different in here. So, two things to note, but I do like how you can uh, fly in the air, go left, right, and all that stuff. I thought that would be pretty cool. So, let's go and get started. But before we do that, um, I do want to add one more thing, and that's the platform movement object. If you're new here and don't know what the platform movement object is, or you know what it is, but don't know how to create movement with it, don't worry about it. We have a two- part video of the platform movement object showing how to use it and what all the variables uh, how they work and what they are so if if you don't know any of that I highly recommend checking the links in the description below where they'll take you to our videos and then after you're done there if you still want to learn about the jetpacks you can come back to this one so now what we want to do is we want to go on and start by just kind of showing you what we've got. So you can see I already have like basic platformer stuff here. And you can see I have my stage already put in here. You can see I have just a floor, some walls, and two platforms that we can be able to boost up there with. And we have the platform movement object over there, and we have our player. And I just have basic movement already created. So when I hit run application, you can see we're falling, we can collide with the ground, we can move left and right, we can jump, we can't keep jumping, and we hit the wall. So now, so now since we have all that done, or at least we already have that done, now we're going and get into making the jetpack. So if you're joining this video and you're wanting to kind of follow along, you don't have any kind of uh, anything already created, this video requires you to have already basic movement already created so let's go and get started the first thing we want to do is add some flags to our player so let's go into our player I'm gonna click them and we'll go to the properties tab and we want to go to AZ and let's go to flags and let's create two of them so we go one and two now we want to name the first one is jumped because we're going to be checking if he has jumped in the air and we want to turn that flag on but let's just keep it off for now so don't check it now we want the other one to be jet pack on because this is going to, because as soon as we jump and we hit our spacebar again we want to turn on this flag so we can start boosting around now since we have the two flags done now let's go on and get the rest of the variables so let's create three oh, not strings variables our first one's gonna be fuel oh sorry not fuel x underscore y underscore dir. So this one's going to be kind of our direction. So this one's going to check which way we're facing, either up, down, left, and right. So this one's going to be important. You can name it whatever you want. You don't have to name it the same thing I did. Now, our next one is going to be fuel. And our last one's going to be jet speed. Alright, now of course you can put these in any order. It doesn't have to be X, Y first and fuel and jet speed. You can have them in different orders. 
So now that we have everything done, as far as I know, in the event editor, or in the frame editor, let's go on to the event list editor. Okay, so in the event list editor, you can see we already have basic movement created. We have our starter frame that sets the platform movement object to our player. We have testing for obstacle overlap. We also have our basic movement keys left and right. And we have our object is standing on the ground. We want to refresh its jumps. And we have jumps on its own separate area, in its own separate group of events on um, upon pressing spacebar. And if jump is greater than zero, we want the player to jump and subtract one from jump. Now the reason we have the jump in its own group of events, because when we create the jetpack, this one's going to be, it's going to be very crucial to have our events in a certain order. So that's why we're going to have our jump in our own group. I mean, you don't have to, like, put it in a group you can always just kind of keep it out there but I just find this will help organize the events so they don't look so jumbled up so that's why I recommend putting it in a, its own group of events and kind of keeping it there okay so now we got all that done now we can go on and get started setting up our jetpack okay so now what we need to do is go and create a new group of events and we want to name this group of events movement value so now in this group of events we want to add a new condition and what we want to do is check if our player is holding down a certain button on their keyboard so we'll go to mouse and keyboard we'll go to the keyboard and we want to do repeat while key is being pressed and we want to do W and we want to go on and do the same thing for each event or each condition so what we want to do is we want to go on and drag grab our repeat while W is pressed and drag it down to a new condition in the same group of events so let's go and drag about four of them there we go so now we can start editing them so let's go on and change the second repeat while W is being pressed to S. And we want to do the third one. We want to edit it by double clicking and hitting D. And now we're going to make the last one A. Okay, since we got that done, now we can go on and add our actions. So let's go to repeat while W is being pressed and insert an action. And now what we want to do is go to our player and we'll go to alterable values, set. And now what we want to do is we want to go to our jump and hit X, Y, dir. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting each time the player um, hits a button like W, S, D, or A, we want to be able to switch the numbers and this will help tell where we're facing so we know where to boost off at. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on and set this one to negative one. And now we want to go do the same to the repeat while S is being pressed. So let's go on to insert a new action, go to our player, alterable values, set, we're going to set x and y dir to this time 1. So up is going to be negative 1, down is going to be positive 1. And now we're going to do the same thing for our d and a, but only we're going to make that to 2. So our d, when we go to insert an action, we want to go to our player, alterable values, set, we want to go to our x, y, dir, and set this to just 2. Now for our next one, we want to go to our a, insert action, go to our player, alterable values, set. Let's go to our x, y, dir, and do this one negative 2. Okay, so now 
what we want to do is go to our jump our jumps group and we want to start adding stuff to our upon pressing a space bar and what we want to do is is add one more action to this so we want to right we want to go and click on like sub one from jump or anything that's in this condition and we want to right click and insert a new action now we want to go to our player and we want to go to flags and we want to set a flag on and this flag is going to be is jump because now what we're doing is, is when we hit the space bar we're checking if the player had jumped so we have we have it where we now we can check which way we are facing but there is one more thing we need to do to our movement value we want to move it above jumps okay now since we have that done we need to go on and make a new group of events so we're going to come down here right click insert a group of events and we want to call this one jet pack start so now now that we have it where our player can jump and now we can tell that he is jumping and we can tell that we're which way we're facing like up down left right now we need to actually turn on the jetpack when we hit our space button again because when we jump we want to be able to hit the space bar again to activate the jetpack now what we're going to do, need to do first is take the jetpack start and we want to drag it above the jumps group events now when you go and add some new conditions this is going to be a bit longer condition it's going to be like three conditions here so let's go and get started and the first thing we're going to need to do is check what direction we're facing so let's go on to our new condition let's go to our player let's go to our alterable values compare and we want to go to our jumps and go to our x y dir so let's go on and do up first so let's do negative one now I'm only going to create one for now because I kind of want to get some visual progress before we start getting the others so we can see what's kind of happening now we need to add another condition we want to right click insert go to our player and now we want to check for our flag so now we'll go to flags flag is on is jumped and now we need one more condition we want to go to our we want to go to right click insert and go to the mouse and keyboard the keyboard and upon pressing spacebar now that we have all of our conditions let's go in and add our action and in this action we want to go to our player we we'll go to flags set on jetpack on okay so now what we want to do is we want to go and create a new group of events and now we're actually going to create the actual flying part so let's go to our group events insert a group of events let's call this jet pack on so now we need to create four conditions in one condition so we want to go to our new condition and we want to add go to our mouse and keyboard we want to go to upon pressing a key which will be spacebar and now we want to add another one so we want to right click insert go to our player we want to go to our alterable values flags flag is on but this time we want to check for jetpack on okay after that now we need to check our player's direction again so we want to go on and right click insert another condition go to our player all double values compare we want to go to our x and y dir and keep it at equals negative one and now we want to do one more thing and that's going to be checking for fuel because 
when we use the jetpack, we don't want him. We don't want the player to be able to fly everywhere. We want to have a limited amount of fuel, so when he runs out, he'll just drop. Okay, so we want to right click, and we want to go to insert. We want to go to our player. We want to go to alterable values, compare, and now we want to go to fuel. But this time we're going to, instead of equal, we're going to check for greater than zero. So if the fuel is greater than zero, you can fly. Now let's kind of fix this up. Uh, let's make sure upon pressing a space bar is on top. So all you want to do is just kind of grab it and just hold the left click and drop it back on top of the fuel is greater than zero. Or whatever's on top. Okay, now let's go in and insert our actions. So let's go to our insert your actions here. Let's go to our player. Oh, not our player, to our platform movement object. Let's go to our variables and set additional y velocity. And what this is going to do is when we add our value, so let's go to our player and let's go to values, A to M, jet speed. Now the player will move in one direction forcibly but there is one problem so let's just say I went to go put a positive number of 800 and since we're trying to go up positive 800 set to the alterable value will make him go down and I found the easy way around this because you can't just go negative jet speed that's you're not gonna you're gonna get an error and I found the best way to do this is just add zero to it so if you add zero negative jet speed now if we set a positive number to the alterable value which say 800 now over here it will be negative 800 so now you'll go up so we're basically converting a positive number to a negative number but there could be other ways of doing this, but this is the way I know. So let's go and keep that as is. We're going to keep it at zero, negative jet speed. And now let's go into two, let's do two other things before we run the application and see our progress so far. Let's go back to the event editor, uh, not event editor, but the frame editor. And let's click on our player. We need to adjust two values here. So for one, we have our fuel. We're checking if the fuel is greater than zero in order to fly. Since by default it's zero, we might as well set it to a number so we're able to fly. So let's just do one. Now we also need to do something to our jet speed. Right now it's set to zero, so we're not gonna go nowhere. Now, since we have negative or zero negative jet speed in that expression editor, now we can just put, say, positive 800, and it will come out as negative 800. Okay. Now that we have all that done, now we can test the application and see what we got so far. Okay, you can see we can fall. We can move left and right. And now if we try to activate our jetpack by holding down W and double tapping the spacebar, you can see we go in the air. But now we're staying in the air. And that's because the reason why we're in the air and just kind of standing there, because our gravity is still on and our gravity is pulling us down at the same time we're trying to go up. So now we're just in the air standing still. But you can see we did go up. Now if you want to see the player just to keep continuously going up, we can fix that. Let's go and close the application. Let's go to the event list editor. And now let's go back to our jetpack on group and we want to add another action. So we're going to go in and right click, insert, go to our platform movement object. We want to go on variables, set gravity to zero. So now if we run the application and if we hold W and double tap spacebar we can just keep going upwards now we're just going to keep going now that since we have 
our player just keep going upwards. Let's go and add the other directions now. So what we're going to be doing is repeating this about four times. Just changing the x, y to a different number and setting the additional y to a different number and instead of y we're also going to be doing x. So let's go and start. I'm going to go and add a new condition. I'm going to go into our keyboard upon pressing we're going to do a space bar. Now we want to add another one. We want to add player. We want to go to our flags is on jetpack. Now I want to go to our insert. Another uh, condition. We want to go to our alterable value. We want to compare a value. We want to go to our x and y dir. And this time we're going to do a positive one. And now we want to add one more thing, and that's going to be our fuel. Let's go to our player, alterable values, compare, fuel is greater than zero. Okay, make sure that the upon pressing a spacebar is on top. And now let's do this again. So what I'm going to do is, instead of just keep re-clicking all this, I'm going to go on and make this a little bit faster. We're going to click on this line of events. We're going to hit Control C because I'm on I'm on Windows, so I'm going to be hitting Control C. And I'm going to hit Control V. And this will copy that line of events all together. And what we want to do this time though, we want to change the X Y dir from 1, so we want to double click it and we want to add to negative 2. And after that, we want to change or we want to copy again and paste it and we want to ch uh, change x wider of negative 2 to regular 2. Okay, so now we're going to go on and keep adding the conditions. So let's go on and insert your action here. And we want to go to our player. Sorry, not our player. Our platform movement object. We want to go to variables. And we want to go to set additional y velocity. Because this is going to be going down. Now, since we're going down, we can just go to our player. Go to our values, A to M and we can retrieve the jet speed, but we don't have to add any special numbers or anything. We just keep it the same because by default, our alterable value already contains a positive number. And let's go on and add the gravity too. So we want to go and turn off the gravity. So we want to add another, uh, we want to insert another action. We want to go to our platform movement object, variables, and we want to go to our gravity and just set it to zero. Now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to be doing a little something different now. Now we're going to go to, we're going to insert a action. We're going to go to our platform movement object and we're going to go to variables and set additional x velocity because now we're wanting to be able to go another way and we want to be able to go left and right. Now see, since this one's negative, we're going to be going left so to go left we're going to be doing the same thing because we're going to be using the same speed we want to keep zero here we're going to do negative go to our player go to values a to m jet speed so now we will go left when we use the jetpack we're going to hit ok and now let's go on and deactivate the gravity. Insert. Let's go to our platform movement object. Variables. Gravity. Keep it at zero. Okay. Now let's do this one more time. We want to insert your action here on the last line. And we want to go to our platform movement object. Variables. 
set additional x velocity and in this one since we're going right we can just keep the positive number so all we have to do is just go to our player values a to m jet speed now let's go in and set the gravity to zero so right click insert go to our platform movement object variables gravity speed zero okay since we have all that done before we can test the application to show that we're going left right up and down now we have to do one more thing and that's going to go back to our jetpack start group so we only have it checking for when we press spacebar again when having W held down and we need to now put in the other buttons so just like before we can just copy and paste this and just change the number so let's go on and right let's go on and click it we want to copy control C and just control V three times there we go so now we just change each value like this one will be one this one's gonna be negative two and this one's gonna be two okay now we can test out the application so we can move now let's hold down D and then I'm gonna double tap well there we go and let's do that again I'm going to hold down A and double tap spacebar and there we go again it's gonna be hard to test um, going up or down or it's easy to test up which we already know that works but down is going to be a little difficult because we can't change direction um, midway or while we're flying in the air but you, I bet you did notice that when we went to hold down left or right double tap and see the jetpack go you can see we're kind of rising a bit and that's because when we jump we have already value built up on our I guess jump strength or or our Y velocity and it keeps that so we're just going to keep going up and since we don't have gravity pulling us back down we're just going to keep going up so to fix this we want to go back we can go and close this we want to go back to our jetpack on and we want to add some more code to each of this so we want to go to each of these lines and add one more bit and we're going to hit insert we want to go to our platform movement object we want to go to our variables and we want to go to our set y velocity we want to set zero and we want to do this to all of them so let's go on to our next line, insert, platform movement object. We want to go to our variables, set y, velo uh, y velocity to zero. Come back down, want to insert, go to our platform movement object, variables, set y velocity to zero. And let's do that one more time down here. Go to our platform movement object, variables, set y velocity to zero. Now there's also one more thing we're going to do. See, since that the player is y velocity is being saved, this also means for the x velocity. So when you jump, and you're already moving forward you're gonna go a little bit faster than attend it so we also need to set our x velocity not our additional one but just regular set x velocity to zero as well and we gotta do this to each of these lines so I'm gonna go and do that one real quick so let's go on and right click insert another action we want to go to our platform movement object we want to go to our variables and this time set x velocity to zero now let's go on and do this for each line again now 
the same way instead of keep doing this let's go on and copy this line set x velocity to each group or each of these events so we're going to click we're going to do control c on set x velocity and we want to come down to each of these events and just do control v and this will kind of pa paste it all in there for us so we don't have to keep clicking and doing it over and over and over again okay now since we're done with that let's go on and run the application again you can see move left and right and now let's go on and move right and double tap now you can see we're just moving one way we're not going up or down and we can also do that for let's restart same thing for up and left okay so now that we got our jetpack to move for us to double tap and everything there is still one more thing to do and now we have to have it where when we let go of the space bar we want to just drop because we're no longer holding it down and we can easily do this by creating a new group of events so let's call this group of events jet pack off let's move this up here so let's go on and kind of just okay so now we want to add two new conditions so we want to go to our new condition we want to go to our player we want to go to our flags and we want to check if a flag is on and this flag is going to be jetpack on and now we want to insert another condition and this one's going to be the keyboard so we want to go to keyboard repeat while key is being pressed and this time we're doing repeat and this one's going to be spacebar and now we want to come over here and right click the spacebar and negate there we go because now we're checking if we're no longer touching the spacebar now we just got to add a bunch of, of actions here to reset everything and to stop moving and stuff like that so let's go in and add an action we want to go to our platform movement object we want to go to variables and we want to go to our gravity and we set gravity to 30 now I forgot to mention this in the beginning of the video but the platform movement object was kept default when I threw it in here I kept it plain so the number of gravity by default is 30 okay so let's hit OK and now let's add another action go to our platform movement object variables let's go to our set additional y velocity to zero because we want to go on and turn off any additional velocities to our player we don't we don't we want it all to zero so let's do the same thing for our x velocity insert platform movement object variables set additional x velocity to zero we also want to set jetpack off so we want to insert another action and we want to go to our player we want to go to multiple values oh sorry flags and we want to go set off and it's going to be jetpack on so we want to turn off jetpack on so now if we try it we go to our let's go into our application let's move it left and right now I'm going to press D double tab you can see I'm moving but as soon as I let go of spacebar I drop and everything resets back to normal I'm going to do it again oh now see here's already a problem see we have it where we do reset our jetpack it works we're no longer flying through the air but there is a problem and that is we have not reset our is jumped because it's still saying our jump is on because remember when we jump it turns on that flag is jumped and now we have to turn that one off also 
So let's go on and close the application. And we want to go to our basic movement. Our basic player movement. And object standing on ground. Now we want to add another action. So we want to insert. Go to our player. To flags. Set off is jumped. So now if we run it. You can see we can move left, right. Now let's go on and double tap while holding D. Okay, we flew. Now let's do the same thing, but A, we're going to double tap, and there we go. So you can see now we can fly in the air. You can see we're kind of going down. It's kind of hard to see going down because the max X velocity and the, or Y velocity and the additional y velocity is both the same number when going down so it just makes it like he's falling immediately without gravity okay so let's go on and close our application and now let's go on and add fuel consumption so to do this let's go down all the way to the bottom and let's add a new group of events insert a group of events and this is going to be called fuel and in fuel we want to add two conditions and we want to come here we want to go to our player and we want to go to our alterable values flags and we want to check if a flag is on and this is going to be jetpack on and now we need to add a second condition to this one and we want to check for if fuel is greater than zero because we don't want to keep having the countdown go further than past zero because we, we don't need to go any further than that. So let's go to our alterable values, compare, and we're going to go and select fuel is greater than zero. And we're going to enter action. And this is going to be our fuel going down. So we're going to go to alterable values subtract from fuel 1 now that we have that done let's go on and add when we run out of fuel we want to go and reset everything almost like that or just like when we let go a space bar so let's go up to our jetpack off let's go on and just copy this event completely so we want to go on and control C control V and we want to keep jetpack on is on so we do want to check if you are flying but instead of letting go of spacebar we want to change that to something else so let's right click and let's hit replace and we want to replace this with our player we're going to go to our player alterable values compare and alterable value now we want to go to our fuel and now we want to check if it's equal or lower than zero There we go. Now there's another thing we need to do. Once we run out of fuel, once we hit the ground, we want to have it recharge immediately. But as soon as we run out and we hit the ground, we're not going to have no way of getting more fuel. So to do that, we need to go to our basic movement and we need to add one more action here. And we want to go to our player, alterable values, set. We'll go to fuel. And we'll set this to 50. Now since we have that done, let's go to our, our frame editor. Let's go to our player. Let's go to our properties and AZ. Let's go to our fuel. Now let's go and set that to 50. Go and put that to 50 and let's try this. So if I go and run the application, I'm going to just keep hitting that wall over there. So I'm going to double tap, or have a better yet. Let me go on and bring the debugger here so you can kind of see what's going on. So here's the debugger. We want to go to add an object in the debugger. We want to go to actives, and let's go to player. Now let's go to alterable values. Hit that little plus sign to expand it. And now we can see all of our values. Now let's go on and click on our 
get back into our project and you can see that fuel is at 50 now when I hit D you gonna see it count down so I'm gonna hold D and then double tap so you see it go down and once it hits zero I fail and it recharged so now I can do it again so let's go straight up this time oh ran out so I fell back down and now I got fuel back but there is one thing if we go on in jet boost and start hitting the buttons like crazy you can see we can still kind of move but there is another thing we need to do and we need to close the program go back to the event editor or event list editor to prevent any bugs happening we need to also check our movement value and we don't want to be able to change direction mid boost or change our values so what we want to do and same thing for our movement we don't want to be able to add additional um, more X to our boosting because then it's gonna make us go a little faster than usual we we'll kinda wanna go one speed so to fix this when we're boosting our jetpack is on so we all we need to do is just check when the jetpack is off to move around and change our value or the way we're facing so let's go to our repeat while D is pressed we're gonna right click we go to insert we want to go to our player, alterable values, flags, is flag off, jetpack on. Okay. So we can move this down. And now let's do this to every one of these. Like we want to do it to repeat while A is being pressed. And we want to do it to all of our movement values. Like our D, um, our W, S, D, and A. But instead of just keep doing it, we're going to just copy and paste it. So click on Jetpack is off. Control C. Go to our A. Control V. Drag it down. Now let's repeat this process down here. V. Drag it down. Control V. Drag it down. Control V. Drag it down. And Control V. Drag it down. Okay. Now to make sure that no bugs happen. We also need to do another thing, and it's going to be at our basic platform movement. And at our object is standing on ground, let's add two conditions. One of them is going to be the one we already have, which is jetpack is off. So let's control V, drag it down. And we also want to check if he had, no longer has any jumps left. So let's right click, insert, go to our player alterable values compare if jumps are lower or equal to zero okay so now we are really near the end we almost have a complete jetpack now the one thing we want to do though is add one more event and this is when when the player falls off say a ledge without jumping they can activate the jetpack while they're falling so to do that, let's go to our jumps, and in this, we want to add a new condition. And what we want to do is go to our platform movement object, we want to go to object stats, and object is falling. We also want to check if he still has jumps. So let's go and right click and add another condition, go to our player, alterable values, compare, and if it's greater than zero so if jumps is greater than zero we want him to be able to fall and if he still has jumps left he can still activate the jetpack and now we want to add an action go to our player and let's go to flags set on is jumped okay I think we're done let's go on and run the application now let's go on, I'm going to go on and expand the alterable value so you can kind of see what's going on here. And now we can boost upwards and boost left. You can see that we 
change direction. We went straight up and then immediately let go of space and hit it again when we had our finger on a different button, which was D, and we're able to land on this platform. We can also fall down and go and use the jetpack then. Didn't have to do any kind of additional button pressing. Because as soon as we fell down, it already activate one of the flags, so we're able to just turn on the jetpack. We move up, go left, and we can go down, and there we go. So there you have it. We have a jetpack, kind of like the booster version 2.0. And if you found this video useful, be sure to leave a like. And if you need any help, be sure to leave a comment down below. And if you like our content, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to keep notified. And we will see you later. Goodbye.